What's up? Today we're going to talk about Gary. Okay, let's back up for a second. The combination of the title and that weird intro might leave you a bit confused. Today's quick focus is the ship, the light cruiser Leyte of the Gary the Woe class. There is a lot of ships in my Space Engineers RP server, most of which have a minimal impact on the memory of those that partake. Oh hey, that's a cruiser. Oh hey, that's a destroyer. Or hey, that's the ship with the really, really, really long name. But every once in a while, a ship's name precedes it, and this is one of those ships. The Leyte of the singular Gary the Woe class, thus it always gets referred to as Gary the Woe, or simply Gary. It's a light cruiser that emerged early on in the war. It's extremely distinctive in the fact that it looks like a giant oversized frisbee with a shark face. I think it's supposed to be a turtle, but honestly it just ends up looking like a Pokemon. Weird shapes aside, the ship was the terror of my server for the approximate five months that the season took place over. Right out of the gate, the Gary the Woe partook in the infamous battle where a Ryder CDF joint squadron with all of their heavy assets attempt to push deep into Khan's space to end the war early on. However, in what can be amounted to as being called a light squadron, the Gary the Woe, along with some light escort, was able to repel three cruisers and one battleship. From here, it partook in a lot of the minor battles on the Ryder front, and then the major battles that developed from. It was the first ship in the squadron to take the tile, uh, bordering the Ryder faction HQ, thus securing the shipyard. After that, it held this position and became the sole focus of the Ryder 20-person faction for the better part of several months. But that wasn't enough. In a short lull, it was deployed to the CDF front because they needed some taste of Gary too, where it partook in several battles that ultimately culminated in the loss of 18 vessels, four of which were of the heavy cruiser or light cruiser designation. From here, it would get shuffled back to the Ryder front, and it would partake in the destruction of the famous or infamous CDF, now Ryder cruiser, Warspite. While it eventually go on to lose its first battle in 18 plus turns this season, it would manage to escape intact. Feeling a bit outdone, it decided to redeploy to the home front where it fought the EFN Eternity's Advent, a super battleship. While the squadron was unsuccessful in repelling this battleship, the battle was quite close and the Gary was noted to have landed many salvos on the Eternity and her escort, with her reputation still not being undeserved. However, at this point, due to no fault of the Gary, the Khan war machine was beginning to collapse. In a fashion that can only be described to fitting of the Gary, she would go balls deep and all in into a battleship with her escort and get promptly annihilated, ending her prestigious career. Throughout the series, the Gary always punched above her weight class, and many, many commanders actually thought she was a heavy cruiser. She almost made it to the end of the war, one battle short, but it was perhaps fitting that one of the iconic symbols of a faction would fall the day the faction fell, and if anything, it pays homage to her memory. Linked in the description is the workshop link, so you too can get your hands on this rare Pokemon. Hey, this was the story of the cruiser Gary the Woe, one of the many, many ships that partake in the Outlands series. The series is a live action RP D&D turn-based style thing, PVP thing. Check out the pinned video on my channel if you're interested in joining, it explains it a little better than I can in this little video. Regardless, thanks for watching, we'll see you all in the next one, and make sure to check under your bed for stray Gary the Woes.